Kia ora koutou, Marky here in the mobile studio. Now this time I'm in an unsalubrious location, a supermarket uh, countdown as you can see. Uh, I can't get over the transition from UK to New Zealand in some respects, in that I always want to call it cost cutter. And on one occasion I was in a taxi asking the taxi driver to take me to cost cutter and he said well where's that and i was thinking well surely you must know everyone know because it's a big you know there's, there's two big supermarkets in this country i think they're all owned by the same people it's all a bracket and a rip off it's going to move the camera to somewhere a bit more comfortable um <clears throat> so uh i was thinking there's something wrong with this guy and then i realized i was saying cost cutter and not countdown but the other weird thing is it's uh they're all changing now they're all being called woolworths so uh, for people in the UK, you'll remember with probably with fond nostalgia, Woolworths, the, um, what would you, how do you describe Woolworths? It was a kind of um, a high street store, usually not that big, medium sized, used to sell all sorts. Um, in fact, licorice all sorts, they'd pick and mix was one of the things I associate with the old Woolworths store. And is where I'd go to buy records as well in my youth. That's where I'd go and buy stuff. And, they had a very limited range, so <laughs> it wasn't like you could just decide that you, you know, you wanted to buy the latest album from a particular artist. You'd have to just go in and see what they've got. <laughs> so I usually end up buying a, an odd mix of things from from there. Woolies, people used to call it. And another interesting fact. Now I haven't even got onto the topic of the video yet, but uh, that's what that's the style of this channel. So if you if you're hating this, then uh, log off now. <laughs> <laughs> Stop watching and find something else because it's only going to get worse. Uh, uh, interesting fact about Woolworths in the UK is that they were always, or nearly always, in high streets opposite a right opposite a zebra crossing, and they would pay. The company would pay the local council to uh, for the cost of putting in a crossing, on condition it was opposite their store, which is a brilliant idea. You know, it's a win-win. So uh, the the town or the district or the city or whatever gets a uh a uh, pedestrian crossing and um Woolworth get the benefit of you know people uh you know the when they use the crossing they're moving straight towards the store so they're looking at it they're seeing it it's just so easy to go in there even if you didn't really intend to in the first place so there we go so this video today is an anecdote and i think it'll, I'll, i've been wanting to do more anecdotal videos for for some time really i don't know why i've held off doing this I, I do have some series that are, uh, uh, are quite anecdotal the one on the owl man of morning um which is a several parter uh is is kind of you know uh, very much anecdotal sit by the fire tell a story um style um so this one is although this one's going to be a short one really because it's just a little vignette if you like i was on a course once with somebody where we did vignettes and one of my colleagues kept referring to them as vinaigrettes all the way through the course so like if you're new to this channel you, you've got the measure of it already we we i say we i i ramble um but in an interesting way in a charming way you know and it's not just kind of uh, nonsense rambling um it's like lots of pithy interesting little nuggets that uh, get thrown into the video along the way so what are we going to talk about today i i want to just uh hark back to my days of living in bath uh or bath if you're from from that area and have that accent or bath if you're from up north uh, but we called it Bath. Uh, so Bath is in Somerset. Uh, I grew up in Wiltshire, and uh, Bath is uh, is just on the just over the border from Wiltshire. Really, it's very close to Wiltshire. And if you've not been there, it's a very elegant Georgian city. Well, it was a Roman Roman city originally, um, built around the site of a hot natural hot spring. And then a Roman temple and a Roman bath complex. And then in the 18th century, it was uh, turned into a resort. Uh, people think the bath was a, a place where people would live all the time. And some people did. But a lot of the, uh, the housing that was built there, the very elegant uh, Palladian style Georgian housing, which is all in, in bath stone, which is this lovely honey coloured stone. These big, tall, grand buildings and terraces and crescents and... Uh, one row of houses was just in a circle called the circus. Um, it was all, it was like a kind of centre parks, really, um, because people used to spend the season in Bath. Um, 
and it was uh, the place to go for you know um, uh, aristocracy and gentry. So, um, and it's kind of interesting because originally a lot of the the houses would have been divided up into uh, flats, so people would maybe hire a floor. Um, they might hire the whole house, and uh, to this day the very grand elegant houses are a real mixture of uh places that where very wealthy people live like van morrison for example um could talk about him as well but maybe that's another video uh you you can have a whole a whole house um but because they're so big often people they're divided into flats and i went to i lived in uh, moved to bath in my 20s and the first place i moved to there was uh, a very elegant uh, Georgian house in a, in a terrace and uh, I had I just rented a room there like a shared kitchen and, and bathroom so there were uh, there was two of us on and it, it was like what they call a garden flat so with these places they would build build them up build up the the level of the road so they had basement would actually go into the road and the the front entrance of the house would the road level would be and the ground level would be higher and around the back it was lower so if you're in a uh, a garden flat then you the one side of the house you've got a window that opens onto a wall and then you kind of you look up to the road level so our kitchen you'd look up to the road level and then around the back where my room was you directly um you directly on the ground level and opens up to the uh, garden. There's only a small garden, but it was nice, and that was where my room was. Uh, and there were three of us sharing sharing that bit. Nice people. Had some had some good times, some good fun there. <clears throat> and then um, the next level, there were like another two or another three, and then the, the level above that, there were another two or three people. So didn't see much of them really. We, you know, used to say hello to them on the stairs occasionally, but didn't get to know them in the same way. So I was living, living there, and then um, I lived at a few other places in, in Bath, uh, including another uh, another um, Georgian place. And the Georgian place is often the... Back in the day, often, if they did rent the whole house, then the attic and the basement were servants' quarters and kitchens and stuff like that. So first of all, I lived in a flat that was down in the basement, and then after that, I lived in one that was up in the att attic. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I say attic, you know, it's a proper floor and everything, but it's at the higher level. So uh, I, I never got out of being in the servant's class, never got to be one of the aristos of Bath. But in this first place I lived, next door to us was a very posh man. Now, now there's nothing wrong with being posh, you know? Um, some people think I'm posh. Um, some people laugh at that as well. <laughs> I. I, I used to say I used to say I was posh, and people used to just laugh at me. <clears throat> well, there we go. I think I'm posh. I'm kind of I don't know. I'm yeah. I, I feel posh, but maybe I don't act. But I'm quite um, scruffy and coarse, and um, in a lot of my behaviours and, and actions. But on the inside, I feel like a posh person. So anyway, the next door neighbour, <clears throat> who seemed like a nice guy, didn't have much contact with him. He owned the whole of his place. So really, you know, you would have been a millionaire, um, at, at least. Um, and he, <laughs> and this is just a silly little story, really. There's lots of stories I could tell about Bath. Uh, I used to be a tour guide in Bath, and I used to, to work on, a, uh, on the riverboat. Uh, tours in Bath as well so there's lots of things I could say about and, I, and I'm, I'll probably return to them maybe we'll make this a, um, a series and we'll talk more about Bath um, but this is just a silly little thing that, that just always tickled me and it's, it's about kind of poshness really because some people are a little bit posh and some people are incredibly posh I used to my best mate's mum always used to say oh I hate Bath it's all full of pretentious people and I always wonder kind of what she meant by that, but but maybe this this story il illustrates that. So um, so the guy knocked on the door, and basically he wanted to tell us to ask us if if we could contact the landlord because some uh, there was a leak of some sorts on our side of the on our property, which obviously joined his terrace, so it joins his. And uh, the wall was, was damp, the wall was ringing wet. Um, but rather than just saying that, 
he said, well, uh, this morning I, I went into my wardrobe to select a blouson, and as I reached in, the blouson sleeve was wet, and then I realised that the 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 wall uh, the wall was wet. So can you tell your landlord? And and I had no idea what a blouson was. I had to look it up afterwards. That was before the internet, so <laughs> I had to get the dictionary, I think, to find out what a blouson. I'm not sure it was in the dictionary because it's kind of French, isn't it? Um, and it's some sort of shirt I can't even remember, but. Um, I was just kind of trying very hard to keep a straight face at this point. Him talking about his blouson. <laughs> and somebody else, so one of my flatmates, so I said there are three of us, somebody else sort of, you know, heard that the conversation was going on and came, and came down to to take part, you know. Um, and because somebody else had arrived, he started the story from scratch in the way that people do. Um but instead of just giving a kind of a, you know, a pricey, you know, a brief summary of, oh, you know, there's some, I was just telling your, your flatmate, there's, there's some damp in the, in the wall and asking if you could contact your landlord and just ask him to contact me and sort it out. Uh, he started off from scratch and, uh, so, you know, so the story was, uh, so, uh, I was searching for, uh, selecting a blouson from my wardrobe and, um, it was very hard to, Keep a straight face after all this blue dawning. Um, so, um, so that that stayed with me. Nice bloke, um, you know. Uh, got nothing against him. <laughs> very pleasant, very polite. Uh, wasn't condescending or or anything like that. He just talked about blouson, which I guess is the plural for blouson. Um, and I still have the image in my in my head. Of, uh, of a visual image of him reaching into his wardrobe because he, he told the story so many times in the end that it's kind of etched into my memory and I have this, this picture of, of him um, reaching into his wardrobe and is, is disgust at finding this wet sleeve and then the horror of the of the wet wall um, but it was the blouson that got me so uh, more on Bath if you want me to say more on Bath let me know uh, I probably will at some point or other but if you want me to do it sooner rather than later give me a shout and uh, I will be back with you in another video very soon that could be about almost anything. But our mission is to help get information out there to people with a condition called retroactive jealousy who are suffering unnecessarily uh, because they don't have the right information to get well. Uh, so everything you do, uh, like uh, liking, subscribing, all that stuff helps us help them. So, uh, so you just by watching this video to the very end, even though you know that you know you, you know that I'm coming to the end now, and you it's so easy and tempting just to click off. Uh, please just wait to the very end. It's very very soon, and then that that makes YouTube uh, give us extra brownie points, and the extra brownie points mean they show the video to more people, so more people with retroactive jealousy get the help from the retroactive jealousy videos. <sighs> So, thank you for watching. Uh, really appreciate it. And Rangi Mario.